Hi everyone. Hi mom. This is my first official video in my new craft room. And I thought I would bring you a tutorial that I promised to do using a playing card and also the little mini envelopes that I've been making because they're not um, the size on your envelope punch board. So I thought I would just sort of, you know, share that with you and um, give you some options. So I've done a couple different sizes. There's that size, and then that one, which is, I think it's the same actually. Yeah, it's about the same. So we'll stick with this one. And then this one is a little more square. Um, yeah, it's a little more square. So I'll give you the measurements for both those. I've written them on here. And in case anybody, you know, is unfamiliar with the punch board, I'll just demonstrate how to do that. So what I'm using is the um, Kirby Teasdale paper pad that's, uh, what is it, four and a half this way and it's about six that way. And so whenever you do an envelope, it's always a square. You always start with a square. And so I stuck with the four and a half because that's what the paper pad came as and I started playing. So um, the one that I really like is this size. I kind of like, it's almost like a, well, it's a little smaller than a credit card size really. Uh, and so that one is scored at one and seven eighths. So all you would do is find your one and seven eighths on your board and you only have to measure once. I think a lot of people get confused. They think they have to continue to measure and that's why their envelopes don't turn out for them. So you measure once at the mark and you punch and it does come with a, a bone folder. It's quite wide and the intention I believe behind that is there's it's less likely to tear through your paper because it's a little thicker but you need to see the line. So sometimes you might have to go over it gently, but go over it a few times, because as you turn that, that bend, this fold, this dent that you've made, lines up with this nose. You see the nose right there? So you wanna line that right up with the nose. Make sure it's in line, and then you're gonna punch, and you're going to score again. And what should happen is as you score, you can see underneath here. Let me tip it so that you can see inside. Okay, so in here, you'll be able to see that your score lines meet. They don't overlap and they're not too far away. Mm -hmm. And you can't see that on the camera, but that's what you're going to look for is right inside there. Okay. Then you're going to do the same thing. Turn it, line the nose up with the uh, dent in your paper and you're going to punch it and then you're going to score again and you're going to do it one more time now you see here it didn't line up perfectly for me because I didn't get it right on the line but there's a fix to that so don't panic <laughs> I'm not <laughs> okay set that aside for now. Now this is the sh shape you're going to get. Too big, too small. The small ones are the ones that bend inside. So when you're doing this on the score line, if you see that your curve sticks out too much, like mine does a little bit, all I do is bring it in just slightly more and just bend it with my finger until I'm happier with the lineup of it. And just, you know, use your bone folder, flatten it out, then do your other side. So yeah, I'm just gonna bend it just a hair more than what I scored at. And then I'm gonna turn it again. And I'm going to see now that I've done that, you can't see any white underneath here because I've done that if that shows up. Sorry my hands are a total wreck because I moved the craft room I tore every nail. <clears throat> now I don't like this look 
personally. Plus, I like to reinforce my envelopes because of taking things in and out of them. You don't want them to tear. So all I do is take my bone folder and then I just sort of gently run a line. Just, you know, sort of... It doesn't have to be perfect because when you um, bend it over, it will be fine. It's just sort of to give you an idea of where to fold that piece. And then what I'll do is I'll put a little bit of glue under here to stick that down. And then I've got a nice reinforced top to my envelope. You see, and then it lines up nicely. Now this also comes with a little reverse punch and you put the tip in and it'll round your tip but it gives a little tiny one and I want a more substantial one so I use a corner punch you don't have to you can use what it came with but I kinda like that look personally you can also do fancy you know if you've got other corner punches you can use those and then fold it down see and it comes just above the bottom there I know that's hard to see let's see if I do that See, it's not quite at the bottom. So at this point, you can do several things. You can put a little slit in here and tuck it in. You can, I've done it where I've put a little piece of ribbon and just glued it on either end and stick it through the ribbon. Or you can uh, glue something right along the bottom and tuck it right behind like a butterfly or something like that. Or you can just leave it like that and put a little paper clip on the top of it. You know, there's several things you can do with that. So anyway, that's the little envelope. So again, that's uh, four and a half by four and a half inch paper. That's what you're going to cut it at. Then you're going to score on your scoreboard at one and seven eighths. Now, if you want it a little more square, score it at two. Okay? So there's the envelopes. Set that aside. Now, I want to show you, these are just cheap Ola dollar store I believe I got them at um, playing cards and you're going to need a sanding block I also got this at the dollar store I mean you can pick them up for a dollar twenty-five and you're gonna distress but you also need a napkin now okay oh here it is I was gonna say I don't remember where I put the napkin <laughs> but yes I do okay so I'm going to use this beautiful napkin that Kelly Gilbert had sent to me of this beautiful peacock and you have to take all the layers off generally speaking uh, there there will be two white ones now if you cut them beforehand it's usually easier to peel them comes off super easy and you can tell this is much thicker than this so you know you've got both layers and I'm not going to cut it or anything. I'm just going to leave it just like that. And then I'm going to take my um, sanding block and I'm going to distress the top. Circular motions are good. Um, you have to use pretty good pressure. I don't want it super red showing through the napkin, which is why I'm kind of distressing it. Plus I'm taking off that shiny bit that's on there which might stop it from sticking real well. And sorry if the camera's going to be wiggly. I'm using pretty good pressure. But like I said, I want it more white showing through rather than red. And then while you have it, that's where you can use that little bit of <laughs> napkin. While you have it, turn it over, and then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. Why, you ask? <laughs> because then you can write on it. If you take that shiny bit off, and you're going to make it distressed looking, which is cool in my opinion. I like distressed looking things. So how much is up to you, you know, what, what look you're going for. My sanding block is getting old.
And if you do plan on... Um, Sorry, am I off camera? <laughs> I, I can feel my arms stretching. <laughs> Depending on, um, you know, how much you want to write on it. I mean, if it's too dark, you're not going to see it anyway, right? Okay. Okay, I'll just clean that up a little bit there. Okay, so now it's very smooth and it's quite distressed. Now, if you happen to have this, it's uh, from... Prima, I think. Yeah, it's a Prima product. If you happen to have this, um, I'll show you how to use it on this. It works great, uh, provided I can get it to dry enough. Okay, then you can use decoupage, you can use Mod Podge, you can use gel medium, whatever you have, you can use. Uh, one isn't better than the other. And this is what I do. I just keep a sponge brush in a Ziploc bag and it stays wet for a super long time because I'm constantly, you know, using decoupage. There's probably even enough on here. I don't even have to open it. Yeah, there is. So then you're going to just cover your top. And then carefully move it away and wipe down this part because you don't want the decoupage on the other side. Okay. Back in the bag. And then I want to make sure that I'm going to get most of the uh, peacock on there. I'm not going to get it all on there because the card's not very big. Those big playing cards would be awesome for this. Great technique. Kind of unique uh, journaling spots. Okay, then I'm just going to take my heat gun. I just want to set it. You don't want to do it too much because it will bubble up. Keep it moving pretty quick so it doesn't get too hot in any one spot. But I just want to dry it a bit. You don't have to do this part, but because I'm, you know, don't want to spend a ton of time watching it dry, how fun would that be? Okay. I think that's pretty dry, and I don't want it perfect, so I'm just going to tear it away now. part is a little hard to show you because I normally do it on the edge of my desk and I do a, um, a downward motion like that on the edge because I want to distress it more and I want to get the um, napkin to come off and it works really really well like it, like say this was my desk I would put this on the edge of my desk like this and then I would do this okay Sorry, I have no door <laughs> right yet, <laughs> so uh, yeah, you're going to hear my husband and my son, I think. You want to do this part first, and then you're going to want to go back over it with your decoupage. So you see how nice and distressed that is? You can even go more. You can use the other side, which is thinner, and you can just sort of rough it up and get it all nice and grungy. I like the pretty grunge. 
That's kind of my thing. Okay, so now that I've made a complete and utter mess here, get that out of the way, and then take my brush again, and what I'm going to do, I'll turn that so you can see it right side up. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pounce. I want a little bit of texture, and I don't like brush marks, so this is how I do all of my books, uh, what, whenever I'm using uh, decoupage or Mod Podge or whatever, this is the technique that I use. And it seals it all nice. And you can feel the texture when it dries, which I'm very tactile, so I like that. And again, just be careful not to get your Mod Podge on the back, because that would defeat the whole purpose of writing on it. Okay, I do have some paper towel here. All right. So now, when that's dry, I will use an archival ink or stays on ink, uh, whatever is um, an ink that isn't water based, water reactive, on the edges. And that'll even age it up even more. And then I take my sewing machine and I zigzag all the way around it. And that just gives kind of a nice frame. And again, it's tactile. It looks very cool. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial and uh, I'll hopefully I'll have more now that I'm in a new craft room and upstairs and got a nice view out the window and I'm very happy. So thanks for watching you guys. Have a great day. Bye.